Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you some C++ tips and tricks which are going to be very useful if you're doing cognitive programming and especially if you're just a beginner then these tips and tricks are going to help you a lot while doing cognitive programming on various websites like CodeChef, Code Courses, etc. So let's get started. So you might have seen on many websites, coding websites that you have to do questions based on test cases, test cases. So you take in the test case, say T and then I've seen many people do this, I less than T, I plus plus, even I used to do this before. And well, there's nothing wrong with this, but you have you can do it in a more elegant manner because you have to run your code T times. And so you run it from I is equal to zero to T. So instead of doing this, you just take in T and you say while T minus minus and inside this, you can put your whole code. So well, there's nothing wrong with the for loop also, but this is a better way of doing the same thing. So you can do this while working with questions with test cases. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you about is using for each loop. Suppose I have an array, one, two, three, four, five. And suppose I want to print all the elements of this array. So the first thing I'll do is find the size of the array using any method. So let's say I'll use size of, so size of AR, size of AR, by let's just copy this by size of AR0 and with this I've got in the size in the variable n again I'll use a for loop i is equal to 0 y less than n i plus plus c out AR of i space okay so with this you see that we get the elements 1 2 3 4 5 but we took the size and then we ran a for loop so if you're printing all the elements of a certain container like vector or queue or, or an array, then instead of doing this, you can simply use a for each loop. So let's say for int x in ar, I print c out x. And this will do the same thing. So again, you're getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically, you can think of it as saying that for int x in int array ar take every value of ar into x and then we're printing x and you don't have to know the size of the ar in this you can simply use a for each loop without knowing the size and you you can usually use use for auto x so for auto x it will do the same thing x space So you can do this and again you'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But the benefit with this is suppose you have a float array, not an int. And if I make it float like 1.4, 2.6, 3.7, 4.1, 5.9. .9. So again, I just change the array to a float floating point array. So I'm getting still because I used auto x and auto x can be used like if you have auto x then it can be used for integer it can be used for float it can be used for character for example if i do x is equal to 12 and i print x and line then i'll get 12 but if i make this 1.2 then i'll get 1.2 so you can use auto x which can hold but do remember that you have to initialize it. If I try auto x and if I try to take in the value of c in x using c in x, you'll see we get an error because declaration of auto x has no initializer. So you need to initialize it. Now, speaking of initialization, suppose you have a vector and you have an int and say vec. Now, you need to have three, you need to have three integers inside this vector initially so you do vector pushback one vector pushback two vector pushback three so initially you needed to have one two three in your vector and so you did this but there's a better way of doing it if you want three elements inside your vector then instead of pushing those elements inside the vector you can simply say one is equal to two sort three and if I try for int, let's say int x, 
vec cout x and log. So with this, I will get 1, 2, 3 because I have declared the vector as having 1, 2, 3 initially. So if you want to initialize the vector with some elements, you don't need to push those elements in the vector. You can just in initialize the vector like that. And now you just saw that I used vec dot pushback. So pushback is not a lot, but you don't have to actually type pushback if you know of macros defined. So if you don't know, I'll just tell you quickly. So many times, you know, we have to use long, long int. So if you have long, long, I have long, long a. Then I take in a and I take out a. Okay, let's just remove this for now. So I have a long long a and I taking the value and I'm simply printing it. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, let's just move this for now. Okay. So I have a long long a and I'm taking the value and I'm printing it. Remove this also. Yeah, so I have I have a long long a, I'm taking the value of long long a, so I can take it like this and I can print it back again. So every time you're using long long, you don't actually have to type long long, you can instead say hashtag define ll as long long. So now what will happen is that everywhere where the compiler sees ll, it will take it as long long. And likewise, if you have a vector of int, say vec, and I do vec dot pushback one then instead of saying vec dot pushback you can simply define pb as push underscore back so instead of pushback you can simply just say pb and it's going to work let me show you let's say i'll print out vec of zero which will it, it will be and this is remove the long long thing you already saw that so instead of long long, you can just type ll wherever you're using long long. And instead of pushback, you can just write pb. So we're getting one which we push back on the top of vector. So I showed you that how you can initialize a vector of int like this, vec is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. And likewise, you can initialize pairs also. Suppose you have a pair of int and int and you call it p. Now you have two variables x and y. Suppose you have two variables and say x is 12, y is 13. Suppose you want to make the pair p as 12 and 13. So you'll do this p is equal to make underscore pair and x comma y. And then you'll say c out. Suppose I want to check the value p dot first and p dot second p dot second yeah so you'll get 12 and 13 because i just made the pair p as x and y so i'm getting 12 and 13 but in each, instead of doing p is equal to make pair x y you can simply like i said like you initialize vector you can simply initialize p also so i'll just say p is equal to 12 comma 13 And we're getting the same thing 12 and 13. So like this, you can initialize vectors and pairs instead of using pushback or using make pair. Now the next thing I'm going to tell you about is using printf and scanf. So we have printf person d like we used, or we have scanf person d and whatever the variable you have. So Usually you'd say that, you know, printf and scanf are used in C and we have C in and C out in C++. And usually it doesn't make a lot of difference, but recently I saw a question. So this is a question on code forces, code chef, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So this was a question on code chef. It was there in the April challenge 2020 division two. So in the first attempt, I did this. So the logic is same for both of these codes. So in the first attempt, I'm doing this and you can see that I'm getting a TLE in this code and I'm using C out and I'm using C in. 
and in this code i am using simply printf and i am getting ac so and i'm print i'm using printf only one here and once here where i have the loop so here i'm only using printf instead of cn and it makes that much of a difference that earlier it was giving me tle but when i used printf and scanf it gave me ac and even though i used fast function with cn and cout it didn't work but as soon as i used printf and scanf it worked so if you have tight constraints then you should consider using printf and scanf instead of using cn and cout now the next thing i'm going to tell you is suppose you have a condition say int flag is equal to 0 and you want to if flag is 1 flag is equal to 1 then you have to say cout hello so this is a very simple thing so you do flag is equal to 1 you check it but instead of writing is equal to 1 you can just say if flag so if flag is equal to 1 then you're going to go in this if so because it's 0 it's not printing if I make it 1 it's printing hello now one more thing about if is that suppose you want to increment a value of a certain variable so suppose I have a is equal to 1 and I have int flag is equal to 0 so suppose if flag is equal to 1 then I want to do a is equal to a plus 1 or if I want to do a plus plus so if flag is equal to 1 I can do a plus plus I want to do a plus plus but there's another way of doing this and that is a is equal to a plus flag is equal to 1 so basically if this returns a value if that is 1 then you go into this if if that is 0 then you don't go into this if. so likewise here flag is equal to equal to 1 is a comparison operation and if it is indeed equal then you're going to get a 1 which will be added to this a and if they are not equal then you'll get a 0 which will be added to this a which won't make a difference so instead of doing this the first thing this you can simply do this although it doesn't make a lot of difference but while writing a lot of code it saves you a considerable amount of time now the next thing that you might already know is using the inbuilt sort function so i have a array i have an array say six seven one two three and you know i've seen many people and even i used to store a code of merge sort and just use it everywhere but instead you can just use sort ar and ar plus n and n here is the size of the array ar and here as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 size is 5 so ar to ar plus 5 and then if i print it cr ar of i and you can see it will come in sorted order so this is the inbuilt sort function and it does this one element in initializer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 anyway, yeah so yeah so the time complexity of this sort is O of n n log n so the time complexity of this sort is of n log n which is equal to merge sort and is considerably good and it is better than bubble sort and insertion sort because it is easy to code bubble sort and insertion sort but merge sort it is not easy to code so instead you can just say sort function and this is an array yeah. so you are getting this in a sorted order and one more thing is that you know uh, if you have a variable maximum say maximum and you have it as 0 and you have an array or suppose you have another variable a is equal to 12 and you suppose you're saying if a is if, ma if a is greater than 12 then maximum is equal to a see out maximum 
So you can see that here maximum will be here it is zero. That's my bad maximum. Yeah. So I'm saying that maximum will be the greater value between a and twelve. So here it will be twelve. Or if I have maximum is thirteen, then maximum will be thirteen. So here I'm using this if condition to check if a is greater than maximum or if maximum is greater than a. So instead of doing this, you can just do maximum is equal to max of what is max between maximum comma a. So whatever is maximum, yeah. So whatever is greater between maximum and a, that value, the max of that value will go into maximum. So 13 and likewise this can be used for minimum also so minimum is equal to min of say maximum comma a and declare it so minimum here will change to see the minimum min value between maximum and a and that will turn that will go into our variable minimum and here we go so min and max function you can use and one more function you can use is this say int a is equal to gcd of say 4 comma 8 see how it is. so you don't actually have to write the euclidean function every time you want gcd instead you can use this inbuilt function and that will give you the answer which is 4 and one more thing remember to include this hashtag include bits slash stdc plus plus dot h and if you're using this then you don't have to use hashtag include algorithm or hashtag include vector this is the only hashtag include that you need in your code so that's it if i remember something else or something important then i'll make another video of it but till here these were the tips and tricks that you can use if you're a beginner in c plus plus and if you're a beginner in cooperative programming and these are going to help you in writing clean and elegant code. Thank you.